Sweet. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to those who are watching or listening. This is the Daniel Teacher's Experience. I am super, super excited to be sitting here with a friend of mine, Jay Howitt. Now, Jay and his team help create content for brands online. His stuff looks slick. His stuff looks smooth. I believe the website is called brand-booster.com where you can go on. Did I say that right, Jay? You did, Brand yeah. Booster? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, so you can go check out some of the stuff, some of the work that he does. But guys, this episode is going to be all about the life of entrepreneurship, chasing your dreams, right? Trying to inspire people to go after what they were meant to do, right? Not just working the nine to five if it's not for you. And really, you know, just letting Jay take the ball here and talking about some of his obstacles that he's had to overcome, the business, what he's doing right now, and, uh, you know, and, and some more. So, Jay, how you doing, my man? How you feeling? Doing good, man. Feeling pumped. Awesome, brother. Awesome. So, Jay, just to, to really break down a little bit more about what you do exactly, do you mind just sharing some of the in, insights of what does it look like when you, when you work with brands? What does that process look like? Yeah, good question. Uh, it's a constantly evolving thing, to be honest. Uh, you know, there's always things to improve and, and refine. But right now, uh, what we're really looking at is long-term relationships with brands. You know, we want to be a partner and, and a friend. Uh, so we want to work with them They'll send us their products and we'll go ahead and organize everything from ideas, models, you know, shoots, if that's on location in an Airbnb or in the studio or down the beach, if it's a lifestyle product. Uh, and then we'll shoot, edit, uh, and they'll have a folder every month sitting in their inbox with, with fresh content they can plug straight into their ads, straight into their social media. So we try to make it fun and, and easy for the brand as well. And, you know, we've had some great relationships over the last couple of years, so... That's sick, man. That's awesome. How long have you been, been doing this for, man? Like, when did, you, when did you first start working with brands? Oh, I suppose I should probably rewind a bit uh, and talk a little bit about my background prior to Yeah, 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 stuff. for sure. Um, oh, where do I start? Well, I grew up in a big family, so seven kids. Uh, so it was pretty apparent early on that, you know, we'd have to probably look after ourselves a bit uh, financially. So uh, early days, we were sort of we dabble with little fun businesses and stuff as kids and our parents are really, really good there, you know, um, aspiring entrepreneurs themselves. I, I guess you could say they were school teachers, but always sort of encouraging us to try new things and whatnot. So I'm trying to think what we did early on. We used to, uh, my little brothers used to sell lolly bags at soccer games and my sister would uh, find furniture from the rubbish tip and then go and flip it for money, you know, do it up and flip it. And uh, my other brother used to sell honey uh, my granddad had a whole bunch of bees and, and he used to go rob this honey um, from the bees and super cheap, like crazy cheap honey. And he would just go and flip it and, and make his wow. cash from it. Um, but yeah, for me, it was sort of when I was 16 ish, I started getting into the Instagram stuff and started growing Instagram accounts. And I used to have software set up that I could, you know, automate the engagement and stuff that, you know, that sort of stuff doesn't work anymore. But back in the day, it was pretty, pretty uh, effective. And, used to do that for myself and then I was like, oh, I can probably, you know, start running other people's accounts. So small businesses, things like that. Uh, I would just, it's super cheap. I'd just grow their accounts uh, slowly over time and ended up, you know, that ended up funding kind of my lifestyle a little bit back then. Uh, I ended up moving back to the Cocos Killing Islands when I was uh, 2017. So our family had spent a bit of time there as kids and then been off island for a while and then gone back and that really shaped my whole, yeah, yeah, like from then on, it just shaped everything. It was really a chance for me to just, after high school, step away from, you know, high school friends, thinking about, worrying about what they thought of me and, and really step into who I wanted to be and start wearing the clothes I wanted to wear. And it was, it was a really profound time for me and I'm super grateful for that. So it was about that time I got into the, the content side of things. So I had a, um, a cheap old camera, I had a GoPro and I think I had a drone as well. Uh, and it was really hard to take a bad photo. If you, I don't know, if you, if you want to look up the Cocos Islands after this, you'll, you'll see uh, what it's all about. But it's a, a beautiful place. And so I just dove into that and started making a few YouTube vlogs and uh, just had fun with it. And, and it turned into a bit of a freelance thing, a bit of a side hustle. And I ended up phasing out of the Instagram growth and focusing more on the content side. Uh, and that, yeah, led me to some pretty cool experiences. I went in... Uh, at one point, you know, I went and moved over the other side of the country to live with a guy I'd never met before. He was a digital marketer and I went and filmed full time for him and his family for, for three or four months. And so I went over the other side of Australia and then I went and lived in Bali with him for a couple of months too. And um, just crazy mindset shifts during that time. You know, you'd always heard of people who 
are out there making making millions of dollars kind of thing. And until you see it in front of your eyes, it doesn't really feel real. So, you know, I had a couple of days there where I was sitting there editing my videos and, and he would, he'd be on the phone, right? Selling, he'd have some sort of um, offer or course or service that he was selling. And um, I think at this point he had a 10 K offer, something that was $10,000 that he was selling to business owners. And he had six calls that day and he closed three or four of them just in front of my eyes. And I was just like, Man, this guy just made thirty, forty thousand dollars. Holy just shit! There, you know, and I listened to the whole conversation. So, um, for me, I was like, "Yeah, there's, there's something here," you know. Um, so, following that, uh, it would have been sometime in twenty eighteen, I suppose. Um, I sort of transitioned a little bit. I was still doing the content stuff that was keeping me afloat, and then I started learning and dove pretty deep into the the social media marketing side. So, running Facebook ads, Facebook ads, things like that. Um, a lot of learning, uh, a lot of oh, cameras falling, <laughs> um, a lot of realizing where my line was. Um, you know, I quite enjoyed Facebook ads and learning about it and I, it's held me in really good stead now, but it wasn't the kind of thing I could just do day in, day out. It wasn't my, you know, bread and butter, you know? Um, and so they got a point where I just stepped back and I was like, okay, where, what direction should I be taking this? And so I realized there was so many talented freelancers and, and content creators who could great, uh, create great films and storytelling and cinematics. But that sort of content just doesn't convert in ads, right? It just doesn't convert on, on the ad side. And so, so I kind of saw a bit of a gap in the market and I connected the two. So took both sides and, and basically started creating content that whilst it was engaging and well-branded, it, it was the style of content that can capture attention and, and convert for brands. So, uh, that would have been really only the rebrand happened about a year ago to brand booster mm. uh, from the previous agency. So since then, uh, we've had a pretty wild ride. The team's grown from pretty much just me. So now there's uh, six of us in house and I've got a buddy over in Bali who, who does some work with us too. And, um, all content. So I'm not running Facebook ads or anything like that now. And, um, just, uh, having a lot of fun with it. That's amazing, Jay. That's amazing. I'm so happy to hear that, man. I'm so happy you touched on like the mindset shift. Like when you see things, you just start thinking differently. Mm. Mm. That's so sick, man. Now, Jay, dude, I have to ask, like the way that you're talking about it, you sound so cool, calm and collected and brother. I would too. <laughs> I followed some of your work, but dude, talk to me a little bit about like, was there any like fear starting out or, or fear of failure or people kind of putting self doubt or just like yourself being like, man, like what if this doesn't work out or no, was it just, I'm, I'm going to go for it no matter what. Oh, I mean, there's always, you always have a bit of fear. I think, uh, I, I don't know. I think maybe less so than most people, but for me, it was really important to have reference points. So people who had done it before or specifically in the industry, because that creates so much self-belief because it's like, you're not trying to invent something or do something for the first mm -hmm. time. So you know, it's possible. So more self-belief means, you know, more chance of actually succeeding. But man, there's been a lot of failures along the way. I was actually, I was on a podcast um, a few weeks back, a friend of mine, and I listened to it back and, and I realized I kind of made it sound like everything was easy. And I just, it just all happened and it was all good. But realistically, you know, it's never easy. There's always going to be a grind. There's always going to be things stopping you. But, um, you know, if you can just trust in the process, I'm a big believer in things happening for a reason and manifestation and things like that. So, um, you know, I was, I knew eventually it would work. Like I just knew, I, I didn't doubt that. Uh, I think that helped me in really good stead, uh, long term. So, Joe, Jamie, let's let's just break that down for a second because I feel like so many yeah, people yeah. overlook like the mindset, the manifestation. Like, no man, give me the practical tools. Like, literally, what did you do? Whereas, Jamie, share me, share me like some of the the importance of like how important is it to manifest? To be like, dude, like I'm gonna win. Like, it's gonna happen. I see it in here. Like, what? How yeah, important yeah. is that? Oh, it's huge. I mean, if you can't see it, then then you're gonna lose motivation. You know. So, uh, yeah, I think it would have been over a year ago, probably, probably more like two years ago, I was on, probably on the bare bones of my ass a little bit. I was freelancing uh, for basically to live off, you know, pay the rent, mm -hmm. pay the food, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. But there were definitely times where it was, it was stretching thing because I was basically eight hours every day sitting at my dining table just um, grinding on this, this. At the time, it was the Facebook ad stuff. And then, you know, as Brand Booster Concept came, came in. And, uh, yeah, and I was spending so much time doing that. I didn't want to take too much freelance work. So 
there was times where I was, I was really struggling there. But, um, but for me, I just, like you said, had so much self-belief, but probably a tactic that I did use. Uh, I used to obviously affirmation. So I wrote out, you know, goals to hit, but in a sense of like, I have done this, I have done that, I have done that. Um, and every morning it was the first thing I did when I woke up first thing I did when I went to bed and, and I was, yeah, some morning super tired, just like barely even looking at what I was doing, but I'd write it out every morning. And so I probably had, I don't know, 50, hundred sheets of paper lying around. They're all loose bits of paper. They weren't even in a book. I don't know why I did that, but, um, just lying around and, and it was, to be honest, I mean, I, I must admit, I don't do that specific thing anymore, but I, I feel like that probably played a, a big part. You know, I was just constantly in my head. I was like, I've, I've done this, I've done this, you know. I'm so happy to hear that, Jake, because I mean, you, you have to, like, like to, you have to have that confidence to believe in yourself. You know, sometimes yeah. you don't have big supporters and you got to be your own coach, if you will. So a thousand yeah, yeah. percent, dude. Now, Jay, man, you yeah. know, uh, one thing that I, I love talking to people like yourself, entrepreneurs, small business owners, or even then people who are big in the fitness game is we can always talk about discipline, right? Having to mm -hmm. work hard, like you said, sitting there at the dining table for eight hours. Talk to me a little bit about the skill set that it takes or the things that you got to do to be an entrepreneur or to start something, to build something of your own. Mm -hmm. Look, I'll be the first to admit I'm not the most crazy disciplined person ever, which is contrary. Wow. To, Interesting. Right. Yeah. And, and funnily enough, the, the digital marketer that I worked with as well, I wouldn't say he wasn't disciplined. He definitely was. Um, but he, he even called himself lazy sometimes. And that's probably more me. Discipline, but I'm also lazy, you know. Um, but then it just comes down to executing every day, I think, and, and starting the day with a small win. And that's something that's been super apparent this year. You know, for me, um, having a lot more responsibility with the team and, you know, moving to big commitment uh, with the warehouse and things like that, you know, it, it definitely plays into mind a little bit more and, and more responsibility. So um, yeah, for me, the little wins really mean, mean the most, you know, getting up early and going to the gym to start the day. Like that's, that's, if I go to the gym in the morning, it's, I have probably one of the best days I, I do that week. You wow. know? And if I could do that consistently, I, I feel like I'm improving. I feel like I'm motivated all the time. So that's been super, super big for me. So um, the little win, one little win leads to another little win. And it just sets your day right. If you don't have that win, and I'm sure you've experienced, I'm sure everyone's experienced it. If you don't have that win, you know, you're a bit flat. And, and then that turns into a flat day. And then that could turn into a flat week, you know. Totally, man. I love that, dude. I love the idea of, cause, cause then it gets really practical, right? It's something that, what is, yeah. you know, what is a small window? Is it working out? Is it, you know, just DM 10 people on Instagram wanting to collaborate with them. I feel like when people have these big goals, it's hard to kind of bring it down and go, all right, what can yeah. I get started on? So I think that's, that's sick, dude. I think when you can really practicalize it like that, that's awesome. And it doesn't have to be just working out, you know, I mean, that's a, a big one for me, but weirdly enough. So living in the apartment with my partner, and we've been here for a couple of years now. And, um, you know, when things start getting messy around, you start feeling a bit cluttered and demotivated. I, weirdly enough, one of the wins that, that I find is going in the morning and just doing the dishes and just starting the day feeling wow. fresh, you know, make your bed, do the dishes. Funnily enough, I, I just enjoy doing the dishes now. That's and that's sick. been one of them. But it doesn't have to be huge, you know. I love it, man. I love it. You're so right, dude. You're so right. I've, I've heard at least more than one person talk about like the therapeutic aspect of just cleaning the place, right? Cleaning your desk, having your stuff organized. Yeah, chuck some your headphones bed. on and have fun with it. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. So just Jay, my friend, just going back to the, the come up period, what do you think has been one of the biggest obstacles that you've had to overcome? Mm, biggest obstacle? Uh, for me, I know what it is. It's definitely the limiting beliefs I had around money and, mm. and my worth. And that obviously it stems from some of your childhood experience. My parents were, um, love them to bits, but you know, they were uh, working class and very much of the mindset of saving money, don't spend on stupid stuff. You know, whilst they were always pushing this entrepreneurial side and they'd had some success with little things, you know, they weren't full blown entrepreneurs um, with big businesses and things like that. So for me, you know, subconsciously had taken on a lot of habits and, and, and thoughts that they probably had and they carried from their parents. And so I found moving from the freelance stuff, you know, either doing things for free or charging very little for it. When I moved into the, you know, building out this company, hiring team, um, a big thing for me was charging more and, and understanding that it's worth more as well. You know, some of these 
brands. I'll give you an example. One of the brands we work with, prior to us coming on board, they'd spent half a million dollars on Facebook ads and their return directly off that was two mil, I think. So 4X return from, uh-huh. from Facebook yep. ads. And we came into the scene and they started implementing all of our content from that point onwards. For, so we've been with them for about 10 months now, but over the next seven or eight months, they spent another half a million and the return directly off that was uh, three mil. So Whoa, uh, six X return. So when you put it really simply, obviously there's other factors that come into play like COVID and things like that. But really simply, if we added another million dollars to their bottom line revenue, you know, realistically that's worth a hell of a lot of money for them. You know, it was the content that did that work. And, and it, it wasn't just the running ads because they've actually since sold the brand and the new owners um, haven't had any e-commerce experience and don't understand ads and they've just been learning and implementing and their results are even better now, which is really wow. funny. But um, yeah, to go back to your question, which was uh, what was the, the biggest obstacle? It was definitely that, that limiting belief, um, pushing that upper ceiling constantly so that you can reach more, achieve more and, and not feel like, you know, you're not worth that. Um, but aside from that, you know, another one would have been, uh, I love the thought of not giving a fuck what people think. I think that's super powerful and you have to, like, you just can't, you're not going to get anywhere if you're worried about what people think. And, and obviously there's always times when, you know, close family, especially, but, um, I've been really fortunate in having a supportive family. And like I said, 2017, when we went back to the Cocos Islands, that was a great opportunity to reinvent myself. You know, people that didn't know me uh, or at least knew me as a kid um, and then all high school friends or anyone who was talking shit, there probably were people hating what I was doing because I was doing something different. I was trying to be that content creator, influencer, whatever. Um, you know, I just didn't hear it. Uh, I didn't hear from them and it was almost intentional. I went there knowing that would happen. Uh, and so that was huge, huge for me. Loved it, man. Loved it. Let's, let's dissect those two gems. So the first one, Jay, I'm so happy that you brought that one up because that's one yeah. thing that I've, I've noticed I kind of found myself in. The last couple of months, man, I've been really invested. So my big thing is like, you know, motivational speaking, life coaching, all that good stuff. Now, yeah. if you know anything about the self-development world, you know, and it's unfortunately plagued with people who are fake speakers, right? Selling you $10,000 for an online course, just total BS. And dude, eventually you get to a spot where it's like, you, I don't want to say you're afraid to charge people, but you can really undervalue your own worth, you know, being like, Oh, like, I don't want to rip him off. But when you do that, it's like, and, and I'm talking to the perfect guy, it's like you put in time, right? You bring people results. And it's like, mm. dude, like you're, you're not doing yourself any favors. You know, you're so worried about mm. not ripping him off. It's like, dude, like you're, you're good. You know what I mean? Like mm. you, it, it's only fair because in other words, you don't want to do it anymore. So I could I totally relate, man. To, in the sense of, mm. you know, when you want to raise prices, it's like, not only are you trying to justify it to the other person, but a lot of it is just justifying it to yourself. You know, justifying you it to yourself, yeah. Yeah, 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 100%. And uh, yeah, dude, I think the, the bit where you talked about not caring what other people think, man, I think it's so freaking hard, man. Like, I think once you flip, once you flip that switch and you don't, you're in freaking la-la land. Like, it gets so much easier. I think, I think that's one of the benefits of social media, man. But I know that you, you post on TikTok as well and Instagram and YouTube and just in general. I think, you know, when you give people a platform where they can say, hey, man, you know, that sucks. Don't ever make another video again. Or, hey, Daniel, your podcast sucks, man, blah, blah. I think it's so healthy to hear that stuff. I swear to God, in terms of building yeah. thick skin, you know what I mean? Just getting used to that and just tuning that out. And I, I know off the top of my head, there's a few friends of mine who are so unbelievably talented, man. But, but I think due to insecurities of, yo, you know, what are my parents going to say? Or what are my friends going to say? What's a complete stranger going to say? They don't post or they don't actually start that business. So mm. I think mm. it's, it's, it's just super damaging. Yeah, man. hundred percent. Well, yeah, dude, Jesus, dude, how old are you, Jay? You're 23, if I'm not mistaken, 22, 23? 22. 22. 22. Holy smokes, man. <laughs> Jesus, man. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. 22 you. and you're doing what you love. Yeah, I am. And, uh, working, towards the the bigger vision i guess that's probably something i left out of the story before but ultimately you know i want to be building brands of my own and and having a bit more freedom in that sense you know being here uh in perth when i first moved here i I didn't want to be in the city i didn't want to be in one place necessarily i was just trying to keep traveling and and shooting videos keep traveling yeah um but there goes the phone (laughs) we're back um but yeah since since then obviously just realigning with the vision and, and knowing that 
it's going to take work. It's not going to be overnight. And so um, being willing to dedicate a couple of years to, to building that. And so that's the next couple of years. But after that, I'm looking forward to really being able to do things, you know, I want to be doing and, and have a, a business that runs itself and be able to start working on other ones. But, you know, I'm not there yet, but um, one step in the right direction. So I'm looking forward to, to that. I love your perspective, Jay. I love that this whole mindset of you have a vision, you know where you're going, but you sound so, so I keep saying calm, but I mean to say so calculated, you know what I mean? Like you're just taking one step, like you're patient as hell, like super Gary Vaynerchuk style in the sense of like, yeah, man, I'm just gonna take one step at a time, one small win every day. <laughs> I definitely sometimes... wasn't the start. I, yeah, I was, yeah, I was the kind of guy that would kind of delve into an idea and then, you know, a month or two in be like, okay, this isn't quite working. Let's try this new thing that's just come up and, um, hopefully this is value to the listeners because you know doing that is is great to test the waters i suppose but realistically you just got to dive in and, and go all in. like you you, you got to go all in you can't have a plan b um and you, you can't if you if you have another job that you can go back to or if you have parents that will bail you out you know you're not gonna make it with that thing so um going all in is is a big thing for me and I mean, you talk about me being calculated and whatnot, you know, it might look like a little bit, but I'm not always, you know, but I appreciate that, man. Yeah. I appreciate your honesty, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, sorry. Oh man, I just lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, dude, plan B, dude. I thought you absolutely nailed it, man. Like with the, the plan B aspect of, you know, I hear the pros of like, oh, it's good, dude, this way, you know, you're always safe. You always have like insurance, if you will. But on the other side, it's like, how can you ever go a hundred percent in knowing that you have a safety yeah. belt? So I, I think it, yeah. it can be so harmful in that sense, man. I'm really glad you brought that up. You're right. You're totally right. Have you had the same thing? Have you experienced the same thing yourself? Uh, definitely, man. I've definitely been in situations where like, for example, you know, if I were to give you a little bit of where I'm at right now, I'm a podcast. Yeah, please do. I make YouTube videos. Uh, I also, but um, you know, when I'm not making these videos, I'm studying psychology and basically getting oh, cool. a, a bachelor's degree. Yeah, yeah. So my big thing is like, I'm big on like the practical psychology. I'm not big on the names and dates or whatever. I want to learn, hey man, what are three ways that you can improve your life? Like with scientific backing, yeah. right? And all that yeah. stuff. And you know, sometimes I find myself in a place where it's like, man, um, you know, when I do finish and I get that degree, it's like in a perfect world, I can just jump into this, right? And just keep doing podcasting and YouTube and coaching people and speaking on stage. But I was okay. thinking about, I was like, man, you know, the safer route would be, you know, you go get a job. And now you do the nine to five and you do this. But the problem is, can you ever really fully immerse yourself? in one? You know what I mean? I mean, I can for a little bit in order to pay for the bills and whatnot, but I feel like there will come a point where it's like, all right, man, if I want this to take off, I have to, you know, in the words of Tony Robbins, I have to burn my boat. Cause once I get to the Island, I burn that boat. There's no going back. Yeah. Yeah. So, so totally, man. That's, that's I like something, that. something I'm thinking like about. That. Yeah. But it's fun though, man. The, the journey's fun. I mean, I, that's why I love talking to people like yourself, you know, because you're in this mindset of, you know, we're in totally different worlds, doing different things, different stages of the business and the career. But it's like, you know, we can always talk about discipline and we, we understand, you know, the art of patience and going after your passion, going after your purpose. Um, so, Jay, my man, I have to say for someone who's listening to this episode or watching this on YouTube, what is one piece of advice that you give to someone? They could be in high school. They could be out of high school, whatever, but just a piece of advice to kind of nudge them towards if they are interested in entrepreneurship or small business or any of that stuff. Yeah, that's a good question. Probably a couple of things I would say. Uh, briefly, one would be to observe more. And, and that it sounds you know, pretty undefined, but realistically, in business especially, you know, a lot of the things, when I started out with Brand Booster, I didn't really barely knew how to charge for what I was doing. You know, I was, I was doing a different, you know, five videos, 50 photos a month as opposed to just a once off video, you know? Um, and it wasn't until there's a reference point of mine, uh, a guy who, a good friend of mine, he runs an agency over in the States and a huge scale, like half a mil a month kind of thing in creative services. Yeah. And, uh, and he has a few YouTube vlogs and, you know, I was going in there and I remember watching one of them and it literally, it, the, the camera went past a computer screen, right? And I paused it and I was able to make out, it was a proposal that they were about to send off. And it said, um, you know, this is how much content we're proposing, this is the price for it. And that was like one thing that just, I had clarity, I had direction, you know? And if I hadn't been observant, I never would have found that. And, and I think being observant is, is huge, you know? Uh, being, you know, people say, 
being a stalker on social media, whatever is, is a bad thing. But realistically, man, if you could do that and if you're good at that, you can find out so much shit that's going to help you. Um, so being observant, I think it's not talked about enough. Um, but the other thing would be a huge thing would be uh, your environment. And I know people talk about this a lot and talking about the five people you spend most time with is who you become, but it's genuinely will shape your life genuinely. And, and if, if not, if you can't find five people to spend most time with, spend it with yourself, get comfortable with yourself and learn from mentors online or something like that. You know, I think that's being comfortable with yourself and surrounding yourself with the right people will change your life in itself. Wow. So man, I, uh, one thing I loved was when you said, Hey man, even though you don't have those people immediately get comfortable with yourself, get comfortable with, mm. you know, working on your own, doing your own things, but also you can always, you know, read books or watch YouTube videos and, you know, get to know if you will, these, these authors online or other content creators. So I think that is, that's such a brilliant way to go, man, especially in 2020. Yeah. Especially now more than ever. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. And I could not agree more, man, on environment, the people who, who you have around you, the people who you look to for, for, for acceptance or for what's right. Or if, you know, if all your friends are, are fit, hardworking, X, Y, Z, I mean, you know, yeah. naturally it's going to rub off on you. Yeah. And likewise you for them as well. I mean, I, it sounds self, I actually, I think another thing is being more selfish and, and it's such a, such a counterintuitive way of thinking, but realistically you need to look after yourself before you can look after anyone else. Oh yeah. And, Hell yeah. And you know, your time is precious. And, and if you have, you know, as much as it might be hard to do, if you have high school buddies or, you know, people who, you know, are, you know, probably not the best for you, you know, they go out heavy drinking on the weekend, you know, they they don't have aspirations, motivation. Um, Unless you want to be like that. If you, if you have aspirations, you got to limit your time with them. And it's not, it's, yeah, it is being selfish. You know, you got to respect your time and and who you give that to. And that'll make all the difference with you long-term. You got to think, you know, Gary Vee says it about the, the whole parent situation when, when parents don't believe in you or, or, you know, whatever. And he said, he says something like, are you going to, you know, uh, how's he, how's he word it? Something about, you know, doing your own thing now and your parent resenting for you, resenting you for that now or not doing that and resenting your parents for the rest of your life, you know? And uh, I think that's huge. I think you're better off making a change now uh, and realistically, a year from now, no one's going to remember, you know? Totally, man. You're so right. You're so unbelievably right. Hey, Jay, man, I can't believe I haven't asked this, but dude, being an entrepreneur, yeah, and sorry to like to just like switch the conversation nah, somewhere, right. but um, that was an awesome answer. But brother, I'm going to ask, like, if you're an entrepreneur and you have your own schedule, what does your schedule look like, man? Like, are you working in your head Monday to Friday? Are you waking <laughs> up 6 a.m. every day? Like, how does that, well, what does a day look like? Or what does a week look like for you? Yeah. Good question. Uh, it fluctuates to be honest, but in terms of like a a relatively consistent week, uh, at the moment I'm still, I I guess we're still relatively early with the agency stuff. So I am pretty involved in the biz still, um, getting to a point of automating as much as possible, delegating, delegating, and then eventually it will be really just top level, you know, won't have to be there every day kind of thing. But at the moment, you know, I'm in there in there every day with the rest of the crew, um, sort of eight thirty to five most days. And, um, uh, for me, a typical day would look like getting up, um, yeah, about six ish heading to the gym, uh, most days, like a few days a week and coming back, eating a good meal and then heading into the studio and just smashing out work, getting everyone amped up and, and having a good day. And, um, then what do I do? Jump on a couple of calls. Ideal an ideal day would be yeah, a bunch of sales calls lined up, jump on those, close a bunch of clients. Oh, yeah. Um, and then stop at lunch, have it play a bit of table tennis, bit of basketball and with the crew and then get back into it in the afternoon. And then after work, yeah, I try to, I try to switch off a bit. I think it's important to have that balance and, and it's, Obviously, my partner being here, it is, it is really nice to be able to come back and, and switch off. I do struggle at times, for sure. Like, most of what we're doing, it is online and social media. So, if I have my phone around, I can technically be doing stuff. So, I've got to be wary of that. But um, weekends, it, it's funny. I was, you know, my whole life, I was like, I never wanted to work a nine to five. I didn't want to have to live for the weekends. And I, I'm actually starting to appreciate the weekends now, you know, for this interim the next six months, 12 months, whatever. Um, you know, I know I'm going to have to be putting in the work and I still work on weekends, but it is kind of nice every now and then to have a weekend to just lie up upstairs on the balcony in the sun and, and whatnot. So that happens sometimes. And 
but then I, I tend to just get creative and start thinking about other business ideas, which, you know, but it's all fun. It's good. I, I, um, I try to listen to podcasts and try to try to have that routine, uh, at least to keep me on track. So. I love it, Jay. I love it, man. I know for my own self, dude, that's something I totally got to work on. Just being okay with just taking a step back and not feeling guilty about it. That's my thing. I always feel guilty. Yeah. I'm not doing yeah, work on too. a Saturday or Sunday. I'm like, damn, Daniel, you could be making a YouTube video. You could be DMing someone on IG. You could be doing this and that. So I think, dude, it's extremely <laughs> healthy to be able to take a step back, you know, just be able to relax. I'm not going to do anything to be recharged, you know, and then go back after it. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't do it all the time. Sometimes you try to do it and then something comes up and then mm -hmm. you're like, oh man, you know, what am I doing? But you got to accept that that's going to happen too. So, um, you know, it's always a work in progress. Totally brother. Totally. Now, Jay, my man, was there anything that you really wanted to get off your chest in this call, in this episode or something that, that was like fresh on your mind? You're like, oh, I've been thinking about this lately. Could be anything, habits, discipline, business, client relations. Is there anything like that floating around? Oh, um, I'd love to know. I mean, obviously, you know, you love the psychology stuff and I've learned to love that, you know, in sales as well, it's a lot of it is psychology mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm, and understanding mm -hmm. where someone's at and, and what their objections are and, and solving those objections before they come up. So for me, indirectly, I definitely have taken a bit of an interest in it. I'm curious to know uh, you, any practical strategies you have or any um, really, I guess, your top level advice on in psychology and life in general, it's just like, you know, I'm sure you have heaps of stuff. I mean, you pump out this content on YouTube podcasts. There's heaps of stuff, but um, what would be your top few bits of bits of advice? That's, that's phenomenal. To live man. a better that's life. For sure, man. For sure. For sure. That's the first of all, I'm honored that you think so highly of me. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Oh, we fooled him boys. We fooled him. Thanks for so much. <laughs> oh man. Too good. Oh, okay. Top psychology, man. To a lot of the man. See the, 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 the very interesting with psychology that I find is like a lot of the things when you tell someone, People remember, yeah, dude, that's obvious, of course. But it's like, dude, just because you're obvious doesn't mean you're doing it, right? A perfect example yeah. is like, hey, man, if you can, what's extremely healthy for you, for your immune system and to function better throughout the day, try to sleep at around the same time and wake up at around the same time. Oh, now, that's, many people, yeah. I'm right, many people are like, that. yo, like, that's, that's common sense. So I'll be like, I, for sure, but are you doing it? It doesn't matter if it's called, are yeah. you doing it though? You know what I mean? I mean, same thing with, with eating and just like, I would tell people like, hey, man, one of the reasons that you might not be feeling well you know, the first thing I would look towards is like, how are you sleeping? Is, you know, what are the things that you're eating? Is uh, I would talk to people a little bit about uh, dopamine, this kind of like reward hormone. Mm. I would talk to people a little bit about serotonin. So for example, one of the times that you get dopamine is actually, man, if you do hard drugs, if you do hard drugs, you'll get a freaking dopamine boost and it'll feel amazing. Another way that you can also get that dopamine is when you post content on social media <laughs> and it gets more likes than you thought it would get. You get the exact yeah, yeah. same feeling as if you just did crack or something. It's unbelievable. But <laughs> so I, I swear to you, man, it's nuts. So dopamine is huge. Serotonin, man, is hugely regulated with, with your mood. So studies have shown that if you have a lower amount of serotonin in your body, that you are more likely to overreact to things, be grumpy, be grouchy. All serotonin is, it's basically this neurotransmitter that gets uh, secreted, released in your brain. And the way that you get serotonin, man, one of the biggest, most likely ways is exercise. I don't know if you've heard of like runner's mm. high or if you do a workout. Mm. I bet you that's one of the reasons why you feel amazing afterwards, especially in the morning. You exercise, you get that serotonin, amongst other hormones, puts you in a great mood. Thus, let's say something goes wrong in the business, you're not going to flip out over it. You're a little more cool. You're, little, you're in a better mood. It works better. I know like listening to music that you, that you love, that also secretes serotonin, you know, when you're really vibing out. But man, like I, I would, the only thing I would say, man, I, I like it. I just name a bunch of stuff and then I say, well, the only thing I'd say, <laughs> um, that's awesome that was good that was smooth but yeah it's it's a lot of these things man that, that people are like you know they're so common sense that people overlook them and i'm like yo please do not underestimate the importance of sleep and how you function right the importance of eating uh the importance of habits man jesus dude like if you want to build habits for yourself doing things over and over again right if you're trying to build a good habit uh, a huge huge motivator in the world of psychology is listen man two things are going to motivate you pain and pleasure attach the good habit to pleasure, attach the bad habit to pain. Whenever, let's say you don't want to have pizza anymore. Whenever you think about pizza, I want you to think about that one time when you had pizza and it just totally gave you a stomach ache mm -hmm. for three or four hours. If you can make an, uh, this link between your neurons and your brain, that whenever you think about pizza, you think about that pain, I swear to you, bro, you won't crave pizza for a very long time. And vice versa is yeah, also right. true. If you want to work out in the morning, if you want to do whatever it is. So I think rather people take the power of the brain for granted in terms of manifestation, in terms of 
you are what you think you are. You know, if you're confident, dude, if you think you're confident, you'll be confident. If you think you're shy, you know, you're shy. The people who don't believe mm. in manifestation, and I realize I'm going on like a little bit of a rant, but I think it's super important. Cause it's like the people mm. who tell, tell you, yo, I don't believe in like affirmations. Like I'm pretty, I'm beautiful. I'll be like, okay, this is what I want you to do for one month. I want you to tell yourself you're worthless. You ain't shit. Nobody cares about you. If you died, nobody will care. And let me talk to you after that month, right? If you see a person's behavior, I swear to God, man, it, it changes you the way you think. Now flip it around. Tell yourself, hey man, I am worth it. I am confident. I'm funny. I'm likable. Even if you're not that exactly, you know, I've heard the saying fake it until you make it, but, but it's more like fake it until you become it. If you repeat something over and over again, consciously, I swear to you on everything that I own, my friend, you can make it real subconsciously. So <laughs> and to package all that up, man, the brain is powerful. The brain is powerful and you're only a YouTube video away from, from educating yourself. I can tell you to become it. I'm going to use that. That's totally. Cool. I'm going to put on a neon sign, put it in the studio. Awesome, brother. Awesome. It's really good. Man. That, that's not mine. I didn't come up with that. I, I heard that online yeah, somewhere, yeah. but uh, it's, it's awesome, man. It's so sick. And yeah. psychology is so embedded with, uh, I would say, business, right? We're talking about, you know, selling to someone's desires and you want to talk about, the, you know, uh, the psychology of colors, if you will, right? Different colors indicating different things. Um, it's, it's super cool, man. It's super cool. That's why in, in school, I'm also studying business, like as a minor under psychology. Yeah. So it's a, it's yeah. a dope combination. Funnily enough, um, my Girlfriend, she studied the same thing, double sick. in uh, psychology and, and commerce. Oh, that's and business, so yeah. sick, man. That's awesome. That is so cool. Funny that. Good, 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 good. Cool, 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 cool. Sweet. Hey, Jay, my man, I've had an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. It's been so exciting. It's been so fun. What is one last thought that you want to leave the viewers slash listeners with before we call it a day? Oof. Uh, I would say... Uh, Something that I, for, for, for if there's any young viewers watching that are potentially sort of early days on their entrepreneurship journey or, or trying to figure themselves out, the biggest piece of advice I have, aside from all the other gems we've touched on, is uh, it's just book. I mean, right now it's a bit difficult, but if you can book a, a one-way ticket somewhere and solo travel, like genuinely go by yourself. Don't, don't try to, um, you know, get your best friend to come. Don't try to meet family over there. Go by yourself for two weeks, three weeks, you'll be, so, you'll be forced out of your comfort zone. You, you'll start meeting people and you just, it'll just change. You know, you, you, you oh, I, I can't even explain it. I'm like struggling with words, but it, it's one of those things where, you know, other people solo traveling, they're a certain type of breed, you know, they're, they're not, they're open to things, they're aspiring. And, and whether they're the most motivational people ever or not, you're going to start making connections and start thinking about things differently. And that's going to make all the difference with when you come back and, you know, so if you can just save for a few months, get that trip, go by yourself. That's a big, big one. Uh, and then see where it takes you. That's awesome, man. You heard it here, folks. Hey, Jay, my man, if the, the people <laughs> want to find you online, what are your social media handles? Where can they find you? Yeah, so uh, my personal Instagram is jai.journeys, J-A-I.journeys. Uh, TikTok's the same. Some, some fun stuff that we just post up on TikTok. And uh, Brand Booster, uh, mentioned before, but Brand dash booster no e and booster uh dot com and you can you can have a look there dope hey it's been a pleasure jay thank you so much man thanks man i really appreciate it awesome thanks listeners thanks booze we hope you enjoyed this episode of the daniel kitchens experience have a sensational day and take care of yourselves <laughs>